Hi, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Uh, we get lots of questions about bluebirds, and I've done a few videos on bluebirds, and you can find those on the YouTube channel. And, and if you go far enough searching back in, in Facebook, you can find them there. But the day, uh, the question was, uh, what other birds nest in my bluebird box? And how can I tell the difference between them and a bluebird nest? Now, that's, that's, that's pretty involved, but I'm going to try to give you an idea of what birds might be nesting in your bluebird box. And some of this is very site specific. That is where you place your bluebird box. You know, your goal, obviously, if you bought a bluebird box, was to try to get bluebirds to nest in it. And like I said, there's entire videos on uh, how to site select for them and, um, they, and, and where you put it. And I've all warned about if you put a bluebird box in the woods or you put it, you know, uh, in cover on a tree, you're likely to get a lot of competition for that bluebird. The bluebirds are going to get a lot of competition for that box and you and you have to let these other birds nest in it once they start. Uh, there's only a, a couple of exceptions to that and we'll talk about that when we get to them. But first and foremost, you know, the male bluebird. I'm just absolutely gorgeous. And right now I've got people who have bluebird eggs. They're, they're laying, uh, they're probably already incubating, you know, cold nights like last night. Um, it's tough on them, and, uh, but those females will brood that young and brood, brood the eggs, incubate the eggs, and she'll keep those those eggs warm on a cold night like last night. So she should have been just fine. Um, and, you know, the, as long as it's not super cold, like the, this afternoon, she can actually be out and, and, and trying to gather and eat a little bit uh, and leave those eggs for just short periods of time uh, on days when it's up here in the 60s and 70s and they're talking about approaching 80. And then we're going to go back down again. So uh, she just has to be attentive to those eggs. Um, and, and know that if she were to lose those eggs. Um, if, some, if, if she thinks that those are not going to hatch, a lot of times she'll just build a whole new nest on top of the eggs that are in there, which is kind of disturbing for some folks. But bluebirds lay eggs on command. So if she thinks that these are not, and she sat on them and she thinks these, bird, these eggs are not going to hatch, Sometimes she'll just build a whole new nice grass nest on top of these eggs and then lay four or five more eggs and then start sitting. So um, that's not good. If you can clean those eggs out, it'd be better, but sometimes they'll do that and there's nothing you can really do about it. But you'll clean all that out after her, right, when she's finished nesting. Um, the, uh, this is the female, not nearly as bright as the male. Uh, she's a much more subdued, and, which is you know, my, my design. And then when they do hatch, this is what the babies look like. That's a nest full of babies that my brother took years ago uh, with a little pen feather starting to come in. So there are the bluebirds. And you notice that nest. That nest is just that perfect little dry grass straw nest. I mean, in your mind, when you think of what a bird nest looks like, it looks like the, a bluebird nest is just about perfect. You know, it's just very neat um, in, in the bottom of the box. Other birds, not so much. Now, the, the main competitor, and we did the whole videos on this, on how to keep them out of, out of your nest box, are the house sparrows. Uh, the house sparrows, this is the male and they will battle your, your bluebirds intensely for the nest box. You can't let them nest in there. I've done whole videos on discouraging house sparrows from your nest box. But this is a, a main competitor because their nest hole size requirement is exactly the same as a bluebird. Um, blue, uh, birds feel safest in boxes in which the cavity hole is just big enough for them to get into. So house sparrows fit perfectly in a bluebird box. Now the difference in their nest is that house sparrows will fill a nest box full of straw and grass and litter, <laughs> and newspaper wrapper, anything they can get their beak on. Though it, it, I used to say it looked like Sears blew up, and that's an old joke. But it, it, they cram it full, and then they build a tunnel down through the grass. They have a tunnel down to where their egg chamber is. Now the problem for bluebirds, one, is that you know the the, the com competition with these guys is intense, and they'll and they'll chase each other and and, and fight each other. But once those house bears have filled your box full of grass and straw, the bluebird can't get it back out. So the bluebird has to abandon that nest box. It can't, it, you know, it just can't deal with it. So 
keep it cleaned out rip that nest out rip that nest out and yes even if it's got eggs in you can rip those out as well remember there's only three species of birds in north america that are not protected by law and they're actually encouraged for you to control one is house sparrows european starlings and domestic pigeons so because they're all three introduced into this country and they all three negatively impact native birds like the bluebirds so the house sparrow and then they've got the male there other birds that will use a bluebird box and that, to me the most common of the most desired birds that uh, that will use them were the, the first ones to to nest in my box after six years when i put it up it took six years for my bluebirds to nest in my box but i had chickadees Chickadees will squeeze, can squeeze into a little bit smaller box, so a classic chickadee box will be more one and an eighth inch or one and a quarter inch, whereas the bluebird box is one and a half inch. But chickadees use them very regularly, um, and they, and of course, they're great birds, and we, we have to let them. Uh, nest in there and and these birds will nest chickadees will choose the box if it's mounted in the woods or even out in, on a pole in in the open so they're they're going to use what they can and one way the, the best ways to tell a chickadee box um, is that they love to use moss if you can see in this picture see the green moss all through here and dog hair they love to line the nest with dog hair um, their cousin the titmouse now i know youtubers are all watching this from all over the country now remember when i'm talking about chickadees you can apply it to probably the chickadee that's local to you we have black capped chickadees here we have carolinas in the south uh, chestnut backs in the west and and i think their nesting habits are all pretty close to the same so i think they'll all use the box as well and that's the same thing with the tit mice who are their cousins you know you have the different tit mice, juniper and oak tit mouse out, out west and 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 so they Tent mice don't use nest boxes as frequently as chickadees do, but they will. They, they, you know, they. You can find them nesting in there. There's a tufted tent mouse, um, and so you you may have them in there. And again, they use dog hair. One of my favorite pictures I've got here of a tent mouse um, was this chow uh, dog was on his porch, and the tent mouse was coming up and pulling the dog hair right out of the chow as he was laying there and taking it to his nest box so very bold little guys and they uh, and they line their nest box with them so chickadees and tent mice and another favorite backyard bird that may use them are the carolina wrens now in carolina wrens i always say that uh you can put the best nicest perfect dimensions everything uh, nest box out for them and they'll nest in an old pair of boots that you got laying out on your deck uh you know an old watering can hanging on a wall or you know anything they then but they will nest in bluebird boxes i've seen them do it um and their nest but they kind of similar to a house sparrow and that they like a domed nest they like to to be go back into their nest um, so uh, but their nests are, tend to be much neater than the house sparrows with all that grass just filling the box but the message there is you know could i confuse a carolina wren with a house sparrow nest watch what's going in and out of your box you know learn to identify those birds and when you see the, what's taking nesting material in there you know a good pair of binoculars will will help you out tremendously but you need to watch what's going in there uh, to be a hundred percent safe that you're not tearing out a carolina wren nest so uh, but they will use them the and, and, and now if you place your your nest box out in the open country or well, bird that you uh, we talked about just a couple of weeks ago that you're very likely to get are tree swallows tree swallows exact same nesting requirement as the bluebirds and they but these tend to like open country and so if you've got a bluebird box out on a fence post in, in an open field you might actually have tree swallows wanting that box as well as a bluebird and in that case what they recommend is putting two bluebird boxes fairly close together remember the rule of thumb for uh if you're setting up a bluebird trail is no two bluebird boxes within 100 yards because the males will fight too much over that that one uh, territory whereas if you put a, a, a tree swallow box and a bluebird box out close together one will use one and one will use the other because they don't compete for the same food sources but they do compete for the same nesting sites so and tree swallow nests look a lot like bluebirds nest except they line their nest with feathers 
So, and they're usually white feathers, and they're usually from other birds. I, I, I thought that would have been, you know, they, whenever uh, females uh, pull uh, feathers off their chest for a brood patch, that's, they won't bare skin to touch their eggs. I thought maybe they would they, they, that, but I think from what I, I gathered, you know, they use feathers they gather in the wild from other birds, and they love that fluffy, soft lining of their nest to lay their eggs in. So tree swallows are great birds, and, but they are, they're not forest birds, they're, they're more open country birds. We see them around water a lot, and they'll nest in old woodpecker holes and, a de and dead trees out in the lake and things like that. So uh, it, it, the tree swallows may nest in your bluebird box. All right, and they, it, let's see. Another bird that you don't know, actually kind of count as an enemy, but he can be an enemy, is a little house wren. Now, we have lots of house wren boxes, and house wren boxes have very small openings, about the size of a quarter or one inch in diameter. But I've seen them, like this case right here, this, is using, this one's using a bluebird box, and their nest is sticks. They absolutely fill a nest box full of sticks. But they fill the house with the, the nest box with sticks and little pieces of sticks, bigger pieces of sticks. But it's very easy to tell them, and they put a lot of them in there. And and, and so, this is a bird that is using a bluebird box, even though it's smaller than the opening. Now, if your bluebird box, oh, one more, got to it before I do that. One that will use it. It's the white-breasted nuthatch, and this is a perfect example of a great capture of uh, a natural knot hole in a tree that a bluebird could use. In this case, the, the nut hatches were using it. Um, and that, and, but this is what we do with nest boxes. We emulate nature. We do what nature does. And this is a perfect uh, photo of that. And white-breasted nut hatches have, will use a bluebird box. It's not very common. And again, the nest box probably needs to be on a tree and maybe even a little higher up so to get nut hatches to use them. So uh, this is wonderful. Now, that picture of the house wren, if you'll notice, there is this metal plate around the opening of the box. And that's because things like squirrels, but also downy woodpeckers and even red-bellied woodpeckers, will try to chisel out that hole to make it bigger so they can fit in and to get in there into nest. Now sometimes, like a squirrel obviously, he tries to get in and it's much too small inside, but they don't know that. So they're chewing and holding it. So putting that protective ring around, you know, like on a washer or there's different portal covers that we have, and it keeps them from being able to do that. But if your nest box has been chewed out and, and gotten a little bit bigger, there's a couple more birds that will use a bluebird box. One, this is a great crested flycatcher. They, they require a little bit bigger, bigger hole, but I was walking with a landowner here near the store one time, and there was a bluebird box on a telephone pole, and I saw a piece of snake skin sticking out of the hole. Right away, I knew it was a, a great crested flycatcher. That's a, a favorite trick of theirs, is they find an old piece of snake skin and they drape it out of the hole. And the hole had been chewed out and it was larger than that one and a half inch diameter that bluebirds require. And the great crested flycatcher, flycatcher came up, landed on the box. And sure enough, that's what was nesting in there, was that, that bird. Uh, another great bird that maybe would be a little more in the woods than, than the bluebirds, but this, this bird was on a telephone pole out in the field, so um, they'll use them in the open places too. But that, had, that bluebird, uh, that hole had to be widened out. And of course, if you widen out the hole, unfortunately, you may widen it up enough for starlings to nest in them. Uh, they're, they're too fat to get in the one and a half inch bluebird size hole, but if it gets chewed out a little bit, starlings can fit in them and they'll take over the box. So it's another reason. And if you do that, if, if, if your box does get chewed out, it, it, you don't have to get rid of the box. Uh, some people will just cut a little square piece of wood, drill a one and a half inch diameter hole back in it and then screw it into the box over the top of your old hole. And that way you've resized it. But using those metal washers and things around the opening that will, will help the, to keep um, them from being able to get chewed into. Now, my last bird that I'm going to talk about using the nest boxes is one that most of you probably haven't ever seen and never thought about nesting in bluebird boxes, and that is the prothonotary warbler.
I've heard them called swamp canaries. I've heard them, you know, uh, 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 I knew it was another fishing name that some friend of mine had for them. But these birds nest in, in cavities, in holes, in dead timber around water, very close to water or in dead wood over water. And if you place a bluebird box really close to still water, now not, not roaring rivers and things like that, um, but back in the woods, just off of uh, a, a still body of water in swampy land, if it, it tends to flood and, and holds water, the, uh, the protonotary warblers will nest in a bluebird sized box in that environment. Just an absolutely gorgeous bird. I think there's another capture here that um, this, this old log had a hole in it that the protonotary was going in and out of when my friend got this picture. So absolutely beautiful birds. Uh, if you've got that type of habitat on your land, you know, you put a bluebird box in that location. Not great for bluebirds, obviously, but if you can get one of these guys nesting in it, believe me, it is a, a beautiful, beautiful bird. So the Pythonotary Warbler, another example of a bird that will nest in uh, a bluebird box. So that's a great topic. You know, uh, thanks for sending in that idea. It's, uh, it, it, you know, so we want to talk about what you want us to talk about. So if you like the videos, please give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, if you subscribe, that helps us out a lot. Uh, send in more ideas, and until next week, let's talk birds.